Hi, welcome back to He Walks With Us Everywhere. I'm Tracy, and it is the 3rd of April in the year of our Lord, 2024. I am just absolutely in awe of our God. He is phenomenal. And I wanted to come on today. I was going to come on live, but I've actually got an interview testimony scheduled for 1 p.m. So so I didn't want to miss that, that time with the dear sister. And so I wanted to make a video for you all today because there's been a few things that have been on my mind, you know, I received just little note in the mail the other day from a beloved sister and her words actually is what kind of inspired today's discussion. It's just a little nugget of truth. And I want to talk a little bit about two things. I've entitled this message, flat tires and hellish fires. You know, we often walk through trials in this life, right? Because the Lord never promises that everything's going to be hunky dory and peachy keen and He never says when you come to Christ that everything is going to suddenly be miraculously wonderful. He promises us persecution. He promises us tribulation. He promises that in this life we will have sorrow and grief. He promises that we're going to walk through fires, that we are going to have floods wash upon us. He tells us that there will be afflictions, right? There's going to be men waxing from bad to worse there's going to be troubling times and difficult things that we have to walk through and then he tells us consider the cost walking with the lord is a definitely it's a conscious decision it's a decision that you have made up your mind to walk in faith to walk trusting our heavenly father knowing that whatever comes even if it seems to be a hellish fire Even if you get that flat tire, right? The Lord is right there with you and he's walking through it with you. I was speaking with a dear sister last night. I was just talking to her about the things that we walk through. And oftentimes this, you know, this is a journey, right? Nobody has arrived. Nobody's made it to that final point where it's like, ah, I know everything there is to know. This life is a lot like driving a car and getting a flat tire. And the reason I say that is, you know, think about you're out there, you're by yourself. I don't care if you're a man or a woman, but you're driving down the road in a place that's maybe unfamiliar to you and you get a flat tire. You got to pull over to the side of the road. It's nighttime. It's kind of dark. Can't really see very well around you. No cell signal because you're in the middle of nowhere. And now you're stuck there with a decision, right? The decision is you sit and you, you pray and wait for help. Or you try and do something with what you have in your vehicle. And so I like to think of it as the Lord. He comes down in those very moments when those flat tires happen in our lives. And he stands beside us. And the first thing that he does, like the first thing we would do most likely in this situation of the flat tire, is he shines a bright light. And Oftentimes, that bright light that's being shown, it's not going to magnify and illuminate the entire surrounding area, right? We can't see it all, but he magnifies and illuminates the area that needs our focus. So we put our faith in him. We trust him. He brings that light, that focal point, and now we can begin to see a little bit clearer, right? Hallelujah. We can begin to see maybe the area that needs to have that tire repaired. And the next thing he does is he says, you're going to need this, this, and this. Here are the tools. You're going to need a jack. You're going to need a little cranky thing for the jack. You're going to need, you know, uh, I don't even know what they're called, but you're going to need the thingy that goes over the lug nut, right? That you can turn and loosen it. You're going to need some strength. Don't forget that. And you're going to still need to have that light shining as you're trying to prepare for this work ahead. And then you go up and now you've got the tools in tow. You got the car jacked up and and the father all the while is standing right there beside us whispering. This is the way. Walk ye in it. Here you go. Here's the next step. Let me show you how to do it. Here's the next right move. Let me let me teach you. Let me teach you. Right. Never leaving us never forsaking us. And so we manage with the help of our heavenly father to change that flat tire. And we are back on the road going along and things are good again for a while until the next flat tire. But you know what happens at the next flat? We have more awareness, don't we? 
we have more understanding now. We have more wisdom. I mean, not only do we understand that the light must shine in this darkness, that it will shine in the darkness to illuminate the situation, but now we know what tools we're supposed to pick up. We know which ones we need to go grab out of the car. And now we're doing it in double time, right? You're talking 10 times faster than the very first time that we face that kind of problem. You see, our journey in this life is a lot like having a flat tire. The first time it happens, man, we are out of sorts. We don't know what to do. We haven't been equipped. We've been programmed the wrong way of how to handle a situation. We get gridlocked. We get freaked out and stressed out and overwhelmed. But praise God, he knows. He knows we're going to be fearful at certain times. He knows we're going to be concerned. He knows that we've been misprogrammed or, you know, our, our, our functioning in our brain hasn't been completely regenerated, restored. We haven't been fully transformed. You see, transforming of the mind is something that happens over time. It's not something that's instantaneous. We don't suddenly, bam, you're a Christian and you get it. You're a Christian and now you've been transformed. In some ways, yes, but the learning, the progression of understanding and wisdom and knowledge and knowing what tools to pick up, y'all, that takes time. And sometimes for most of the things, it takes a lifetime, doesn't it? And we serve the most patient God, the most compassionate God who knows our frailties. He knows we're made of dust. He knows we're just flesh and blood bodies that until we're born again, have not the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. But once we make that decision, once we choose Jesus Christ, now we get to be renewed in our minds each and every day. It's a renewing of the mind. This is something that's ongoing. We'll never reach a place of completion or fulfillment here on earth. This is where we're being refined. I'd like to say that earth is the refining. It's not that we're being refined and, you know, those flat tire moments, the whole of it, the whole of our life is a refining, right? It really is. And, and another thing that I was thinking about with this dear sister who had written, and, and thank you so much for writing in, says, um, think about growth. Think about how growth happens. I've been thinking about this a lot. You know, growth absolutely happens in the fires, doesn't it? That's where our, our faith is built. You cannot build your faith on a mountaintop. And I know I've shared this before, but I was just thinking about, I was thinking about trees. I'm sitting here looking out my window, praise God, and I'm seeing the trees and I'm seeing the beautiful flowers that are blooming on some of them. I'm seeing the green grass and the purple flowers. I'm seeing the trees blooming and budding. And what the Lord was reminding me about and showing me, he was showing me growth. The beginning of a tall, strong, mighty tree, whether it be roots that are, you know, near the surface because there's plentiful water around, or whether they're sequoia trees and the roots go deep and spread out far, every growing plant, every growing seed starts in the soil. It starts in the dirt. Isn't that interesting? It starts in the darkness. It starts in the darkness. The seeds begin in the dark. That's, that's all of us. That's every one of us. We begin in these corruptible bodies, in these sin-filled, flesh-consumed bodies. We begin in the dirt. We begin in the darkness. But suddenly something happens, right? And, and now you're, you're watered. You're watered by the love of God. You're watered by folks walking around who are, you know, giving words of life to your life and encouragement. And now we begin to grow. We begin to root, right? Every growing tree, plant, flower, it begins to grow roots. And the roots are what reaches out and it searches for water and nutrients. Think about that. Well, we, as we begin this journey, as we begin this renewing of the mind, this transformation in Christ, in Christ Jesus, we begin to branch out, don't we? And we begin to search for that living water, the water of life, the life-giving 
nutrients of Jesus Christ. And as we do that, we begin to break through the surface, don't we? And we start to grow and we begin to produce fruit. We begin to show forth all the things that that growth under the ground, in the darkness, in those hellish fire moments is producing. You see, and everything that's happening in those dark places, in those difficult places, it's not for naught. It's not just for nothing. Everything that's happening, even today as a tree and a flower and a, as everything is growing, as we're seeing the trees blooming, the leaves springing forth new shoots, the flowers budding, there is a process happening in the darkness. We can't go up. We can't grow. We can't produce fruit unless we go through some of these things that are more difficult and more trying. It's what produces that strength in us. It's what gives us the ability to go forth and to speak forth the words of the gospel, to share wisdom and knowledge and growth. Growth begins in the darkness. And each one of us had our start in the darkness of this flesh, in the darkness of these corruptible bodies. But we are now putting on the incorruptible, which is in Christ Jesus. You see, what I love too is if you think about a plant, think about a house plant. If you were to get that shiny leaf spray stuff that you can buy to make the leaves super beautiful and you dust them every day and you make them just, you trim up the little this is and that's is that need to be trimmed and you manicure it and oh, you just make it look like a beautiful living plant, but you don't care for the rest of it. If you don't water that plant, if you don't open the windows and give it sunlight, I don't care how much you prim and prune and, you know, proper up the outside. I don't care how much pretty foo-foo spray you put on the outside. If you aren't tending to the soil, to the things that are needing to be dealt with underneath the surface, if you're not doing that, y'all, it's going to die. It will wither. And that is the case for our souls, isn't it? This very day. We can have the outward appearance of being a godly man or a godly woman. We can say every right word that there is to say. But if you have a root of bitterness, if you have a root of the love of money, if you have a root for the things of this world, the pleasures of this life, the lust of the flesh, the desires of life, rather than the desires that God would have for you, you will wither and fade away. And nobody wants that, right? We don't want that. So tend. Tend to the things that the Lord has given you today. Look for those tools that he's already given to you for those flat tire moments. And hold fast. This is where we can find that joy in tribulation. This is where we can find the joy in persecution. Because the devil, while he's brilliant, and he is, he's smart. He knows a thing or two. But he is absolutely emphatically 110 percent lazy he's a lazy lazy okay and so what we know is that if he's always and yes i say always if he's always been able to get you with this or that or the other thing if he's always got his hook in you and pulled you over here into this fear or over here into this worry or over here into this uncertainty or or got your brain spinning about you know, the news or I don't, whatever it is. You, you guys know what it is. Today, take those thoughts captive. Today, recognize that the same tricks that the devil has been pulling on you since you were knee high to a grasshopper are the same tricks he's going to use until the day our heavenly father calls you home. But we can overcome. We can be more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. So it's in Christ and through him. And all we have to do is what? Surrender our all. Surrender everything for his will. We trust him. He's a good father. He's not going to lead us astray. He's not going to entice us toward evil. He's not going to forget about us one day or, you know, shut off the faucet 
from the living water to us. It's not going to happen. That's not who we serve. Our God is faithful and true. So yeah, I just, I hope it made sense. I hope, uh, I hope y'all are edified by this short little message and, you know, flat tires and hellish fires. Ain't it the truth? But God is merciful and compassionate. He's not going to leave us. Praise his holy name. All right, y'all. Well, announcements, announcements. So like I said, I will be, Lord willing, recording a testimony Tuesday today. So I can't wait to have that up for y'all. I am, I will do my best to have that up next week sometime. Lord willing, Lord willing, it'll be a Tuesday because, you know, testimony Tuesday and all. And I'm still working on this deep dive. So I'm at a point now where I think my research is just about complete for it. And I'm compiling uh, the presentation, putting together the uh, the picture story of it because I love pictures. And <laughs> we do have our upcoming baptisms and fellowship trip coming up. And let's take a look. I'm going to read this. The first stop we'll be making, Zoe and I, it's going to be Monday, April the 15th at 12 o'clock p.m. So that's noon. We'll be at Lake Tawakani State Park. And that is T-A-W-A-K-O-N-I. So Lake Tawakani State Park in Wills Point, Texas. So it's Central Time Zone, 12 noon, Monday, April the 15th. I hope you'll come out. It'll be a time of baptisms, fellowship, and just camaraderie, you know, being able to see each other, make connections, Lord willing, for people who are nearer by than we even know. Praise the Lord, right? So come out if you can. Love to see you there. The next time and place that we will be, we'll be heading north and it'll be Wednesday, April the 17th at 1130 a.m., also central time zone. Wednesday, April the 17th, we will be at Mammoth Spring State Park. And that is in Mammoth Spring, Arkansas. And again, there's a there's an area that has a little a little beach, a little swimming hole area there that we'll meet at. And Lord willing, baptize and fellowship. So I hope that all of you who can make it and who are desiring to will do just that. Can't wait to see y'all there. And I'm just excited by what the Lord's doing. He is, he's faithful and true. You know, he has big plans, plans that we know nothing about. And I can't wait to see what else and where else, you know, he's going to send us. I love it. Also, don't forget tonight. Uh, tonight is Wednesday, the 3rd at 5.30 p.m. Central, 6.30 p.m. Eastern. Brother Neptali has his live gathering every Wednesday night. Come check it out tonight. I may be there. I may be editing. Have to see what the Lord has for me, but I hope to see all of y'all over there. I'll at least stop in and say, hey, so God bless you all. Stay encouraged. Don't let the flat tires and the hellish fires get you down or make you fret or make you doubt. You know, tonight, um, Brother Neptali is going to be talking about unbelief. Hold on, y'all. Hold on tight. The Lord has got whatever, whatever you're walking through. That's a fact. All right. Love y'all.